Rome Osayitu for the last session today. It's a great responsibility to steer this boat from this point. But right where you're standing, you want to commune with him in a moment of time. Uh, the moments of his encounter that he will make available in the next few moments will live through your lifetime. The Bible says a day with God is like a thousand years. The shelf life of one encounter can transverse generations. Can you commit him for such a moment tonight? Oh God. Oh God. My so sele eremure casico brisco falama. Nebro hosque sasani mandeli. Hey! Lali ma supre hescosi sanahaita. We ask that your presence, oh my God, we minister to every heart, every spirit here. We we'll mend every broken heart, will administer cure to every sickness in the moment of time. We commit to you on this, oh God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Once again, we thank you. We yield to you. Manifest your counsel. Do your good pleasure. Oh, touch every life. Lives of those here present and lives of those online. Glorify yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Thank you again for the great privilege to stand and minister in your presence. It's, it's easier to take when you normally take this. Uh. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things that are seen were not made of things which do appear. So when the substance that we were talking about this morning is adequately furnished, what it does is that it brings us into the realm of spiritual knowledge, the realm of perception, and the realm of understanding. A new platform of logic is achieved on the account of that substance. So it means, therefore, that there are things that you can only understand by faith. I'm not talking about the kind of understanding that you get because you visit a, a, a laboratory and you strike at the heart of an inference, a scientific inference. I'm not talking about the understanding that you achieve because you attended the lecture or you read the book. I'm talking about an understanding that finds expression because that substance that faith is has been formed upon your heart. Come with me to the book of Isaiah. Let us find... Um, adequate 
adequate explanation for what I am talking about. Isaiah chapter 11. I will read from verse 1 to verse number 3. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of God shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. Now, it is needful for us to understand that what is being revealed here is the anointing that is going to power the office of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, this is a scripture that is talking about Jesus. In fact, if you read the context adequately, you are going to see that that scripture is pointing to the operation of the Christ within the context of the millennial reign, if you read in context. So he's talking about the anointing that the Messiah is going to manifest. Are you still with me? Now, I'd like us to look at verse 3 carefully. He said, this anointing, this operation of the Holy Spirit is going to make him of quick understanding in the fear of God. Now, we will need to do some linguistic investigation because my emphasis is quick understanding. If the Bible says that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things that are seen were not made from things that do appear. Now it doesn't appeal to logic. So Isaiah chapter 11 verse 3 is given on an access into the understanding of these matters. That this anointing is going to make him of quick understanding. If you click on quick understanding, in your Hebrew lexicon, you are going to find the word ruach. If you click on the meaning of ruach, the traditional meaning of ruach means the breath of God. The breath. Indicative of the fact that the moment the breath of God hits your spirit, it produces an understanding. This understanding is supposed to be a functional substitute for the sight of your eyes and the hearing of your ears. This understanding is supposed to be an operation of the spirit that should be, superior, should be held superior to the manifestation of your physical senses. Now, I need to provide context for that scripture so that you, you understand the workability because the idea of the conference this year is to analyze that faith that has capacity, potency to move mountains. And the analysis needs to be thorough in order for every one of us to be able to exercise this God-given capacity. This is the way we live as just men. For instance, Jesus makes a statement, and I'd like us to take note of that statement. He says, in the book of John chapter 3, the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. My emphasis is the response of Jesus. Let's just stay with the response of Jesus. Are you there? Jesus said unto him, verily, verily. Ah, you are not with me. Now, the, the Bible gave a boisterous introduction about this man called Nicodemus. He called him a man. He called him, he's a ruler. He's a Jew, he's a Pharisee, and he's Nicodemus. You see, the Bible, the Holy Spirit was fighting for space in the Bible. If the Holy Spirit could afford such a robust introduction <laughs> of this man, then there is a reason behind it. 
So there were five ways, five approaches you could take to analyze the man. But when Jesus was addressing the man, Jesus only had only one way to address him. Even though there are five open doors of analysis, Jesus could only address him as a man. Because he became a man before he became Nicodemus, he became a man before he became a Pharisee, he became a man before he became a ruler. So in the, the foundation of everything that he was, was that he was what? A man. And then Jesus addressed him as a man and said, you were not born where? So every other thing, hallelujah. Every other thing that you have built on this your manhood is suspect. Are you there? You are still not following me. Jesus said, except a man be born again. In fact, this is Jesus' closest to defining what it meant to be born again. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The word see in Greek is ido, which means to perceive by the use of senses. You know when you were in your mother's womb and you were nine months old, you had eyes, but your eyes were not meant for the womb. You had to be born into the natural world first before your senses became relevant. So Jesus is saying that you had to be born into the realm of the spirit before your, your senses are there. They are factored, they are wired into your spirit man. But you see, you need to be born into the realm of life that is governed by the Holy Ghost before those spiritual senses of yours can become relevant. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? So now you can understand when the Bible says, it shall make him of ruach understanding. When the breath of God comes upon your spiritual senses, they are activated, they are mobilized. And a different realm of perception becomes possible. A different realm of education becomes possible. Faith glides on that perception. Faith glides on that revelation. Faith glides on that understanding. Faith glides on that logic that finds expression on the account of the Ruach activating your spiritual senses. Now, I don't have time to digress and to take us on a refresher course on spiritual senses. Now, I'm not talking about spiritual gifts. I'm not talking about someone that has a gift of the spirit. I'm talking about someone that has come into the economy of the spirit. Do you have the spirit? Then you are capable of spiritual senses. Because someone is saying, I don't have a gift. No. Do you have the spirit? It's not the gift of the spirit, but the spirit. In the Holy Ghost, there is a basic level of perception, for instance, called the knowing of revelation. The knowing of revelation. You will see a lot of that in the book of John chapter 13. The Bible says, are you there? Give me John 13 quickly. John 13, quick, quickly, on the screen. John 13, John 13 verse 1. Ah, okay. It's a now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus, on the line, knew, knew, Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world. And having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Verse 3. Jesus knowing, on the line, knowing. That the Father has given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. That means Jesus, wait, wait. Jesus knowing that the Father has given all things into his hands. Jesus knowing that he was come from God and that he was going back to God. Do you know that if you want to torture someone to get information. You want to torture someone for him to denounce some things. You cannot torture someone out of a position of spiritual knowledge. Are you there? He already knew. So even if you tie him and begin to beat him, 
He doesn't take that spiritual knowledge away from his spirit man. What you know by spiritual knowledge is what is truly yours. There is nothing that can take it away from you. They can take away the coat of, of your coat of many colors. They can take away your vehicle. But your spiritual knowledge, the things that are revealed unto you, they belong to you and your children. Your captors cannot take it. Your persecutors cannot take it. Jesus knew that the hour has come for him to be taken out of this world. He knew that he came from God. He knew that he was going to God. My question is, what do you know? By faith, we understand. What do you know by faith? Apostle Paul was speaking and he said it was because of the labor of the gospel that he has suffered so many things, but he knows who he has believed. And he's persuaded that he's able to keep that which is committed unto him as against that day. He knew. So the persecution meant nothing. He knew, so the affliction meant nothing. You can't beat away his spiritual knowledge. What do you know about the Holy Ghost? It means you have not done business in the ecosystem of Ruach. Are you still there? Now, so that's one spiritual sense, the knowing of revelation. The taste of discernment. It is possible for you to sample things. It is written in scripture, test and see that the Lord is good. There's a way to sample things that come your way. There is a testimony that the Spirit of God will give whether or not something is from him. And every believer has an inbuilt discernment faculty. It depends on when, whether you develop it or not. There's an inbuilt discernment faculty built into the architecture, the infrastructure of every believer's spirit. Because God is aware of the fact that Satan, in order for him to misdirect us, he needs to get us to believe wrong. And when you believe wrong, you live wrong. Your faith life will translate most naturally to your living. Your conviction will translate to your options. What is not available in your conviction will not be available in your life. So when you see a man's life that uh, manifests all the colors of the Broadway, it is because it's flat on the inside. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Now, so, when the breath of God hits your spirit man, your spiritual senses are activated so that you can operate within the framework of the knowledge system that the Holy Spirit made available to protect your life, to guard your life, and to propel you through his activity upon your spirit man. Through faith, we understand. You know, during the course of the little ministry we've done, um, my own process was, in my own opinion anyway, my process was too hard. Too hard. Too hard that at some point in the process, smiling was not part of my social experience. My wife has changed so many things in my life, and may the Lord bless her, Jesus. I, I was like John the Baptist. <laughs> when I look to the left, I see the way God deals with other people. It's so wonderful. My own experience is tough. It's like a cantonment. There's, there's a regiment. (laughs) 
It was many years later that I understood by faith the reason why my own case was different. The day you gain the understanding that I'm talking about, you will stop desiring to be other people. You have not yet started getting understanding about your work with God and the preferences that God has chosen concerning your destiny. That is the reason why you prefer your neighbor. That's the reason why you would have wished that you were so, so and so brother, so, so and so sister. It's because you lack the understanding of faith. That, your process, does not make sense in any realm except the realm that is governed by the Holy Ghost. In fact, some of the challenges you go through, God is, they are not good experiences, but God allowed it. And it is in his good will that you should travel on those paths. It's not everything God takes away. Sometimes he gives you the capacity to go through things. And like I told you yesterday, if, if somebody wants to mold with clay, they slap the clay, they stretch it, they slap it, they stretch it, they stretch it until the clay becomes tired. That's when you, you have the capacity to yield. So just in case you notice that your own the dealings are intense, it means you are hard, you are hard in the flesh. <laughs> so it will take an ancient hand of God to stretch you. Yeah, you are hard in the flesh. You are so rooted in the flesh that there is no breathing space for the Holy Ghost to, so there will slap. <laughs> stretch. When you become tired, it means that your strength, your wisdom is no longer in yourself. It means you don't have the capacity to pursue your ambition. So you, 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 you will learn through that process to wait. Okay, what do you have in mind? And if it doesn't answer for eight months, you are, you are not perturbed. If that's how you are going to escape further stretching, is, is your good way. We will, we will tarry, we will wait, we will wait. It means you are becoming wise according to the dealings of the Holy Ghost. You are understanding the temple and you are allowing yourself to fall within the framework of that government. What he is doing is that he is producing a peculiar treasure. And until you understand by faith, you might curse the day you were born. You might find yourself fighting against the protocol that has been put in place to manifest you in your best colors. Today, today we need to labor in prayer and ask that God will give us understanding. You, 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 you finished your service, all of you, five of you stood and snap picture. You are the only one that is jobless now. The rest. <laughs> God will equip you with the understanding of why he allowed your own advancement to look like slow in the natural. There is something he wants to turn your eyes to see. And it's only through by faith that you will get to do what? To understand. Hey, my time is gone. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, as I round up. Because we have a long practical session this evening. There are a few things I already understand by faith about this, concerning this meeting tonight. Hebrews 11. Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 17. Hebrews 11, verse, Hebrews 11, verse, 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 verse. Are you there? Okay. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, verse 19 talks about the understanding that made his obedience possible. 
He was operating from another level of logic. Don't think that obedience is natural. There is a different level of logic that God makes available. And if you have that logic, your natural response will be to obey. But if you don't have that logic and you're looking from outside, it's a mystery. So I'm showing you the mechanical engine of faith. Huh? Now give me that scripture quickly, quickly. Accounting. Mm. Let's not go into the Greek word of accounting. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. You see, when God came to encounter Abraham, there was a way he appeared unto Abraham. He appeared unto Abraham as the God that raises the dead and the God that called those things as be not as though they were. That was the introduction. That was how he revealed himself to Abraham. And on the strength of that revelation, he was armed with that revelation when God was asking him to offer his son. On the strength of that revelation, he knew, he concluded that the God that raised the dead, he has the ability to bring him back from the dead. Maybe he wants to do one magic. But his faith was anchored on the fact that the way God appeared to him was as the God that has the capacity to raise the dead and the God that calls the things that be not as though they were. Having that at the back of your mind, it was easy, therefore, for Abraham to interact with God, to obey God in the light of God's request on his life because there was a background knowledge, background knowledge that enhanced him he was operating from another level of understanding and logic. One of the components of faith that you must understand is knowledge. The spiritual knowledge behind the, the practice of your conviction. The spiritual knowledge behind it. I was very sickly when I was small, almost always sick until I had an encounter with Jesus. I can't tell you, the encounter was not in words. The encounter was more spiritual than it was academic. But what I got from the encounter was that I could see my sickness on Jesus. I don't know how that happened. And that was how I was not only healed, but I entered into healing ministry. As we begin to pray for the sick this night, I will see that thing again. And there is no sickness that is bigger than what I saw. There is always a spiritual knowledge, an encounter, a, an understanding uh, that makes the walk, our walk of faith fluid. A man that doesn't have that understanding is going to struggle. It comes so naturally to people that have had encounters. And that encounter has filled your heart. And there is no room for doubt because that reality is alive. We are going to pray tonight. And you pray for yourself. There is an understanding that you need that will enhance your walk with God. From 300 level, God began to show me that the part of of ministry is calling me into is, is, is going to be dangerous. So whereas everybody can declare that um, I'm going to live for 70 years, I'll live for 120 years. I told my wife, I don't know how long I'll live. It might be short, it might be long because of the things I've seen. If you want to work with me, I can't promise you long life. Oh, you're laughing. I know it. So I'm prepared for that destiny. The fear of death, I left it behind long ago. 
If you are looking for a man to stand up in the face of danger, call me. I left it long ago. But I was not born like that. I was a very fearful man. There were encounters that I had. There were encounters that I had. Those encounters, it shaped my understanding. The Lord will shape somebody tonight in the name of Jesus. <laughs> During COVID, the law in my state was that only 30 people are allowed in a room. It can be this size, but just 30. So we had 15 people in the room. Some guys in the media room so that we could do some broadcasts. Then the police came with um, handcuffs to pick me. So I, I, I just followed them. And they were wondering, uh, you won't resist. No. Uh, you not. So the whole intimidation didn't sell again. They said, you were supposed to resist. Yes. No, let uh, you, okay, you want me somewhere? Through faith, we understand. There's an understanding I have. That I know that laboring in the north, I am going to meet with persecution, terrible ones. But I've been prepared for that encounter by an understanding. It's part of my calling. Can we pray tonight? Somebody needs to be shaped. We are not among those that will run because somebody is saying, okay, we'll kill you because we believe in Jesus. You'll be, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked by faith. We understand. Can we pray tonight, Lord, that understanding that I need. That understanding that I need to be able to deliver obedience in that hard request that you are making of me. Oh, my God. Bring me into it so that obeying will become easy. Obedience will become easy when you have the kind of understanding that I'm talking about. Somebody needs to cry. We are in the last days. God wants to shape the people that will carry his cross. God wants to deepen his walk in the hearts of men. God wants to take you further than you have envisaged. But he's going to do it by bringing an understanding. He will bring an understanding. He will bring an understanding. Oh my God, someone is not praying. <laughs> this understanding that I speak of will change everything. It will change your motivation for ministry. It will change your style. It will change your outlook. It will change everything. Open my heart. Conduct a sorcery upon my heart. Bring me understanding. Yes, in a hunt earlier. Moreka Siko Bemalia Kino. Shagabandos Kete Bresco Fila Mantalia. There is an understanding that will cure your motives. 
an understanding that will shape your perception through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God and that the things that are seen they were not made of things that do appear this understanding will put you in your own unique mode oh my god do something on our hearts tonight that will take us beyond the periphery beyond the surface into your depths i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that is able to keep that which I've committed unto him as against that day. Thank you, Father. Silo Coben Ali Caselimon. I submit completely, 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 completely to your will. I submit completely. In the name of Jesus. Now we are going to minister to the sick in 10 minutes. If you came with any sickness tonight, came with any pain, a growth on your body, something that the doctors have confirmed, you have laboratory results about a condition that you have, this is your moment. This is your moment. Do me a favor, put your hand where the pain is, where the sickness is. Put your hand upon it. And just in case you came with a cane, a walking aid, put your hand on your leg. Put the cane aside. You came with asthma, with ulcer, with any form of paralysis whatsoever, eye defects, hearing defects, put your hand there. Believe God for a miracle. In the next three minutes, we will pray. Just put your hand there. If I say in the name of Jesus, give me a big amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. I bind every sickness, I bind every pain. I bind every disease. I bind every affliction. Blinding spirits be bound. Deafening spirits be bound. Pains go. Tumors dissolve. I command cancers to dry up in the name of Jesus. Fibroids dry up. Tumors dry up in the name of Jesus. I arrest every spirit of paralysis. You spirit of paralysis be bound. Come out of the bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. You pain be bound. Come out of the bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that yoke break in the name of Jesus. I release the healing power of God your way tonight. Let it flow from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Now I command those eyes, eyes, see, ears, hear. Paralysis go. Tumor go. Pain go. 
asthma go, ulcer go. Oh my God. Short sightedness go. Long sightedness go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So the, the, the healing part of God is flowing now. It's flowing now. Now there's someone with short-sightedness that the Lord is touching. He's touching your eyes. I command those eyes to see in the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone with pain on your chest. That pain has fallen off your chest. You can check it. Someone that had an accident and there's a part of your body that has sustained a pain. This is for some months now. Check for that pain. You'll find that the Lord has taken it away. Mm. Grace is released in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So I'm seeing like two eyes already healed. About two eyes are healed. Now, wait, 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 wait. So the people I want to see are the people whose eyes are healed. You can... The short-sightedness, you have noticed that the eyes have been corrected. Long-sightedness, it has been corrected. If you are in this hall and your eyes have been healed, come here. Come here. Come here. I have eight minutes. Ah. There's something I'm seeing. There's something I'm seeing. I cannot see it in the natural, but my spirit is seeing it. I cannot see it in the natural, but my spirit is seeing it. That person that came for this meeting, and you came with a walking aid, you came with a walking aid, I cannot even see you. I don't know where you are sitting. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Take that cane up and begin to walk. I said, take the cane up. Take it up and begin to walk. Take the cane up and begin to walk. Take the cane up and begin to walk. Take the crutches up and begin to walk. 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 Take it up and walk. Take it up and walk. Anywhere the person is in the overflow, take that cane up and walk. Walk out of your seat. Walk out. Walk out of your seat. All right, so like I said, I cannot see the person, but I've given the instruction. Anywhere you are, I challenge you. Rise up and walk. All right. I hope I, I meet that person before I leave. Now, the Lord has sent me to you. Huh? Help her take that child away. He has sent me to all of you. Maybe not all of you. Maybe a few of you. And uh, this is what he has asked me to do. He said he healed your physical eyes because there is one among you that he wants to open your spiritual eyes. So the anointing to open your spiritual eyes, it will begin to come. It will begin to come stronger. It will begin, oh my God, it will begin to come stronger. 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 Yes, that oil. That oil will become stronger, become stronger, become stronger, become stronger, become stronger, become stronger in the name of Jesus. Become stronger in the name of Jesus. I'm still waiting for that person that came with a cane. The Lord sent me to you. I saw it two times in my spirit. I don't know if there's an overflow. Is there an overflow place? I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Now, I want to touch this 
these people here. I'm seeing two trumpets. So there are two people here that will receive the gift of prophecy. No, it's not an amen matter. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Those two individuals, let the anointing rest on them. 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 Let the anointing rest stronger. 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 Let the fountain of the gift of prophecy open in your spirit. Let the fountain of the gift of prophecy open in your spirit. Let the fountain of the gift of prophecy open in your spirit. Hmm. I'm seeing the fire, the healing fire. Someone is going to receive the gift of healing in the next 12 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I see someone that was born a stammerer and the Lord is healing your tongue. You will leave this meeting and become fluent in your speech. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now please do something for me. Can you say Amen? Amen. The implication of the Amen is that um, a woman whose womb is tied. Don't worry, wait, wait. That woman, fire, will come into your womb. You will, you will feel fire in your womb. Now, it will happen in eight seconds. You will feel fire. 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 Fire in that womb. Can you make a request quickly? One request. One request. One request from him. One request. The heavens are open. Stop looking at the preacher. Just make a request. Now listen. The angel of the Lord just came here. God is renewing the anointing on the life of 16 people. On the life of 16 people. On the life of 16 people. He's passing through the crowd, passing through the congregation, passing through the crowd, from my left hand side to my right hand side to the back of the auditorium he's renewing the anointing on 16 lives on 16 lives on 16 lives there is a fire there is a fire that is coming from heaven there is a fire that is coming from heaven there is a fire that is coming from heaven there is a fire there's a flame there's a flame okay it's even becoming stronger. It's 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 becoming stronger. Cove mania si cope na hase light. Romena sante li cope bahalaita. Cove. 
Cresce There is a sister You have a calling of a prophet And the fire of the prophetic Will catch up with you It will catch up 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 See and hear like a prophet. 